Hello, good afternoon everyone and welcome to another Art for All group and this week we're nearly at the end of January and if you've been tuning in for the past couple of sessions we've been talking about calendars and time, the passage of time, especially in lockdown and today I wanted to think about something that we often associate with time which is numbers and I think often, well certainly for me, I think I was never a mathematical person at school I think I used to always want to do art classes rather than maths classes but actually there's a huge amount of maths in art and there are mathematicians who go into their work thinking that they're going to make maths but actually end up making art so the roots into creativity can be found in very different ways and I'd like to share with you um, some artwork that might inspire you to maybe write your own poetry, maybe make your own artwork, maybe think about numbers and ways of representing numbers and also the places we find mathematics in life that we don't necessarily expect. So what I'm going to do is share my screen and go to this, okay, I'm going to full screen. And I'd like to start off with an artist that a lot of you might be aware of. Um, so this is a piece of work by Jasper Johns and he did a series of work in the summer of 1960 using the superimposed numbers of zero to nine and Johns let the process of painting the numbered sequence dictate the structure of the painting and this allowed him to concentrate on the qualities of the paint itself in exploring colour and thickness and the result is a highly abstract stru structure but one rooted firmly in the real world so you can see that all these numbers are covering each other over and if you've ever looked at Italian futurism from the start of the 20th century there's some of the reminder of this it's kind of very very organic but also very mechanical as well and these um the paint in between is very very thickly applied very painterly and it becomes this beautiful kind of almost like stained glass effect but actually they're just numbers just numbers superimposed on each other and it's it's, he was looking at very ordinary, familiar, everyday things, but things that have an iconic, emblematic quality. So you might like to try and recreate this yourself. It's something that anybody could do. And you will find new shapes depending on the order you put the numbers down and you'll get different shapes coming out in your drawing or painting. So moving on. This is an artist, work by an artist called Paul Ashwell, and he explores prime numbers and so this consists of 72 small canvases each of which displays symbols that represent a number non-prime numbers are shown by combinations of their symbols that indicate their prime factors so you can see that this is a way of showing prime numbers and showing them in a way that we can understand almost it makes me think of semaphore and if you hold up different flags it can mean a completely different thing and by combining these symbols you make a number but then you can split them apart and make a completely different number but I suppose the irony is that with prime numbers they can they're only divisible by themselves and by one so how do these break apart how do these stay together but they all hang together in this form and they're actually very beautiful and they look almost like something that you might find I think maybe I think of them as kind of you might find them on the underground uh, maybe in London, maybe in another city, but they seem almost like shorthand for something, and they are shorthand for prime numbers, but maybe shorthand for something more as well, so I really enjoyed looking at these. And this is another way of representing a huge number, so this is called Seeing Pi, and it's a quilt by an artist called John Sims. It measures eight feet on each side, and the colour grid in the middle represents pi, a number that in decimal form goes on forever. Each colour represents a digit of pi. So each of the colours, so maybe orange might be two, and each time two appears is that, but you could have a quilt that goes on forever and ever and ever. So that's what's interesting about this. And this is somebody attempting to show four-dimensional geometry in a two-dimensional form. How do you explain four dimensions in a 2D form, and this is by an artist called uh, Tony Robin. And this is a poem, um, which I'll only read um, the last, um, the last uh, 
stanza of, um, and it's by Helen Spaulding. And again, it's talking about prime numbers. I oh, prime improbable numbers. Long may form in the hunters, steam in abstraction, waste skeleton patience, stain nonconformist, nuisance, phenomena irreducible to system, sequence, pattern, or explanation. So prime numbers really resist formulas that try and calculate larger prime numbers. There's still this mystery around prime numbers. And I suppose we don't think of there being mystery in mathematics, but actually there is. There's mystery in art and there's mystery in maths as well. This is a work by Hamid Naderi Yagane, who's an Iranian mathematical artist and digital artist. And he, he uses mathematical formulas to create drawings of real life objects, intricate illustrations, animations, fractals and tessellations. So he will input formulas into a computer program one way of doing it. and then the iteration of these formulas will create these forms but then another way is reducing a drawing back into formulas so there's two ways of going about it this is a work by natalie Maybach, and she takes geographical data so data about high tide lines different heights of the land she then turns it into music into musical scores and compositions and then she turns the musical scores and compositions into sculpture and this is called Antarctic Explorer. So I think it might measure the ice in the Antarctic. And this is uh, Daina Hanina. I might not have pronounced that correctly. She is a Latvian um, mathematician and artist, former adjunct professor at Cornell University. And she crochets hyperbolic planes. And this is how she explains hyperbolic planes and crochet. So I don't know if any of you crochet, but if you do, well, let me give this a go because it looks amazing and it is maybe some of you who knit or do crochet you're already quite mathematical already so that is the end of the slideshow for today so thank you very much for joining and if any of this work has inspired you please have a go at it write your own poems write out your own numbers superimpose them turn them into different forms um find poetry and prime numbers, do crochet, do knitting, and just numbers can measure the passage of time, but they also tell us different things about the universe, which maybe sounds a bit sort of airy-fairy and wishy-washy, but there's, there's beauty in a lot of things, not just in the things that are most obvious. And there's mathematics in the shape of a leaf or the form of a flower or the clouds in the sky, but there's also art. So thank you very much for joining today and I will look forward to seeing you again next week. All the best. <laughs>